This is one of the best motherboards you can buy for your Ryzen 9000, 7000, 8000 and above beyond CPUs. And Gigabyte wants to charge $500 for this. What exactly are you going to get for it? Is it worth it? What's going on with the switching? And what can you do with this HDMI port? Well, you're going to find out. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com. And if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done. Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out hookies.com in the video description below. Inside the box, we have a decibel header or a little microphone that measures the loudness inside the case. And we've got a little fan to blow air onto our DDR5 that's running super fast. Temperature prong, another temperature sensor, two Velcro straps for cable management, the super cool new Wi-Fi 7 adapter that has a quick or easy switch so you don't have to screw anything. We've got two SATA pods, some spare screws probably for the fan, Aura stickers and a little Aura badge. Oh, and there's a front panel G connector as well. We've got four DDR5 dim slots and interestingly, can you see these ones there? The ones that have a little silver round. That's where you put your first dims when you've just got two and they've put them ultra durable but it does support four as well but a lot of people are going to run two and they go into the silver ones. Our AM5 socket is here. You often think of like why do you need some new motherboards and so on and often with a new generation of CPUs the new motherboards come out as well and one of the biggest things that you get you usually with like the new series of motherboards as well is better RAM support. Now the RAM could be supported also on the older one but usually they work on better traces like the way that the DDR5 channels work in there and the different PCB layouts usually get like less resistance and so on and you get like better RAM support with different motherboards. At the same time it is a big marketing thing as well to separate one from the other because it could actually work on the X670E as well. Usually what we see is it's a little bit better on the new series motherboards. Now one of the cool thing is that I've found that there is these little fins of that heatsink there is very nice because when you've got front fans of your case blowing air it's going to blow directly into there and then kind of through and out from the back so it creates better airflow in there and you've got these air channels and you can see that the DDR5 and the two slot there has also these kind of air canals there so the airflow can go nicely through. In terms of the design of the motherboard it's gamery you know team up fight on to me a bit cheesy right this master logo is a little bit weird to me as well make it more minimal i think this is much nicer it will look good and i think it will appeal to more and more people right now i'm not so sure about it now it's not the worst i think rog is worse what rog does is like even more gamery and i like that their design is bigger so rog or asus for example does separate little m.2 heat sinks in there but here they thought well why make a little gap why don't we just make one big slab so we have less pieces and it's actually a bigger piece which means bigger area and thermal capacity to actually soak some heat out which i'm liking then let's take a look at the motherboard headers on the top here two eight pin eps power connectors we've got some fan connectors here one two cpu optional and cpu fan five volt argb another five volt argb reset switch power switch debug led for the error codes 24 pin power for the motherboard there's two temperature sensor headers in there and an hdmi port now what is that for and i think this is a really really cool one looking like gigabyte has built like their own system diagnostics kind of a panel so if you put hdmi in here and then connect it you can actually see some of the system stats how your system's running like gpu usage cpu temperatures and then megahertz and all these things i'm a big fan of that i like to just glimpse over to my pc and see okay i can see what the temperatures are it's like the cluster behind your wheel when you're driving the car you can see everything that's going on with your with your car i like that and this hdmi port allows you to do that i can't wait to test that one out stick around we're going to do a build so we can actually test and see how this works this is a front panel usb type c 20 gigabits in speed I am liking that. Easy latch to actually release the GPU, as you can see. Boom, clever idea. This is the decibel sensor or the microphone that was in the box. You can plug it in there. Four SATA ports, front panel type A port, which is five gigabits in speed. I like that they put the G next to it. So front panel USB 3 and USB C, and this is 20 G and there it says 5 G in there, which is really, really nice. We've got three fan headers, but they're laid down flat. So 
that's an interesting one. Front panel headers, another two fan headers, another front panel USB type A header, and this is a five gigabits in speed as well, USB 3.2. Two USB 2.0 headers here, another system fan header. So there's a lot of fans, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess that's usual. TPN header and ESPI header. 5 volt, 12 volt ARGB and 5 volt ARGB. LED demo, so if you put it on a display somewhere in a shop, plug it in there, it will run the LEDs. Another 5 volt ARGB header. So interestingly, there's four of the 5 volt ARGB headers and one 12 volt. That's quite a lot. And then finally, front panel audio, which is here. Let's look at the M.2 and removing them is very nice. All toolless, so we just remove that latch and then this heating comes off. As you can see, there's a lot of metal in here that keeps it cool. Thermal pad underneath on both sides and this is a Gen 5 slot that goes to the CPU. And the same with these bottom M.2s. I'll just open it and it comes loose and then you've got the big slab in here. Interestingly, it actually attaches with magnets on the bottom there. So magnets and then kind of slots in, which is really good and easy. You can see thermal pads on the top and then on the bottom, thermal pads everywhere. Now, when looking at the ports here, what you can see is a Gen 5, not Gen 5 slot here, Gen 5 and Gen 5, four all together. But how does this all work? Are we gonna lose anything when we plug Gen 5, Gen 5 and Gen 5 here, as well as a Gen 4 drive? Are we gonna lose some things? So let me show you this. So I've got the motherboard block diagram going on in here. So basically this here is the CPU and all of these lanes come from the CPU. And then for PCIe Gen 5, so this is Gen 5 lanes, connect the CPU to the chipset. And then because the X870E is like a dual chipset, there is another connector that connects these two PCIe chipsets with another Gen 5 between themselves. So we can see that to the CPU, directly connected to the CPU, you can see the audio codecs that are on the back of the IO. We're gonna look at that in a minute. You can see the USB 4 controller, that comes from the CPU as well. You see the ESPI and the TPM headers kind of, they go directly into there. Obviously DDR5, all of them go into the CPU. But then we have the M.2 socket three, which is M2A CPU. The way they look on the motherboard is kind of weird. So this is the A, then it starts from the bottom B, C, D, okay? So the A one, so that's top slot goes directly to the CPU. And then we've got the PCI Express slot there which is the top slot here, that goes X16. So all the 16 lanes of PCIe Gen 5 go to the CPU. As you can see, it goes onto the CPU. There's a switch between. If you've got anything plugged into the M.2 socket three, which means B, B and C, like two of these. So there's a, they are both X8. When you plug PCIe Gen 5 or any M.2s on the third and fourth slot, top slot, starts to run x8 speed because there's no pca gen 5 graphics cards it's most likely going to run pca gen 4 x8 speed which is a bit of a shame that knowing that okay the third and fourth one if you plug anything into here you're going to start losing your top slot cpu because all of these lanes come from the cpu and that's not enough to run all of them at full speed it this kind of doesn't make sense to me i'd rather have pca gen 4 storage in here i know people would argue that okay your pca slot you're never going to use pca x 8 gen 4 kind of bandwidth in there yeah but i'd rather not lose anything but just add more things if that makes sense so this is a little bit sneaky because a lot of people would not know that this was happening with these pca gen 5 slots in there then we see in this bit here so this is pcax press 4.0 in there that goes directly to the chipset which means that this fourth slot in here, even though it looks like a second, goes to the chipset and is PCA Gen 4 X4 speed. Obviously to the chipset, we've got the front panel USB Type-C and some of the Type-A's in the back and USB 2.0 headers. And then from the secondary chipset, we get the PCA Express slots in here. So that one is here, PCA 4.0, and that is an X4 slot, which means that this slot here, PCA Gen 4 X4, goes directly to the chipset, doesn't share any bandwidth with anything. And if you wanted to, you can get some kind of a M.2 expander card and have, you know, more storage in there if you wanted to. And then the bottom slot here, is PCIe Express 3.0 and X4. So we've got PCIe Gen 3, X4 slots there that goes to the chipset. 
and then through the chipset that's all connected to the CPU. And that's kind of the block diagram what happens on the motherboard. So if you've got anything plugged into the expansion slots, nothing will change. The only thing is when you plug anything into the like third and fourth slot coming down from the top, even though they are B and C slot, and then you're gonna start to lose some GPU lanes in there. Putting the heat sinks back. So nice, I love the easy installation for M.2s. Let's take a look at the I.O. So we've got a clear CMOS button in the back as well as Q flash button to update your BIOS. Two USB 2.0 headers, four USB 3.2 headers, five gigabits in speed, and then four and 10 gigabits USB 2.0 headers here. We've got two USB 4 ports, and remember that's standard with the X870E motherboards, and they also support display output which comes from the iGPU as well as this HDMI. Now, the interesting thing is how many displays can we really support here maximum? Because USB 4 should support three, I believe. And then if you have two of them, is that six and then seven altogether? But then at the same time, the iGPU will have a limit what it can support. So basically that's the answer for you there. We've got a five gigabit LAN. So the previous 670E motherboard, we had a 2.5 gigabit. So it's nice that it's five gigabit now. But at the same time, at $500, I want a 10 gig LAN, okay? Because 5 gig is a little bit of a weird halfway midpoint there. I see more and more things now in the industry where they're moving it to 5 gigabit. But a lot of the switches and a lot of the networking don't really like 5 gigabits. It's like a random middle thing that they don't always support. They go like 10, 2.5, 1. 5 is not often there. Can be but not necessarily. We've got the Wi-Fi antenna connector for Wi-Fi 7, optical audio output, mic input, and another line out. Now, there's one more thing that I haven't mentioned yet, which is this fan here, okay? So that fan, what they want you to do is basically screw it into the top slot here, and then when you screw the motherboard in, it kind of goes in there, and then blows air downwards toward your RAM sticks if you've got them in there. The only problem I have with that is that's kind of like against the airflow. The motherboard will be standing up in your case like that. And then you've got the front of the case pushing air in. That's the most usual airflow and somehow out from the top. So the air will go from the bottom like this way and then high up. Whereas this fan wants to work against the airflow, what's happening right now. So it's trying to blow the air towards these ram sticks and kind of downwards and then is, there's going to be turbulence going on. Now, Gigabit says that, yes, it's going to be lowering the RAM temperature, but I think it would have been better if this fan could have been right over there like that and then blowing this air over the RAM upwards. But it doesn't go in there because the way that this branch here works, it's got a little lip in there and then this easy latch kind of a there is on the way so the screws won't align. So you can't put it there, even though this would be really nice getting the air that's blown in from the front and then going it up. I see what they're trying to think here is that, okay, you've got a hot GPU in here and airflow over this is still better because the air that comes from like, let's say pass through GPU or from the front will be cooler than what's the RAM, what the RAM sticks will be doing. So it will still cool it down. And I think this will be better for the overall airflow. All in all, this is a fantastic motherboard. At that price point, I do have some of these nitpicking concerns that I showed you. And as a creator, I don't like to see M.2 switching like that. Like, don't tell me that these are Gen 5 ports if I'm losing some of the other bits. Just tell me that one Gen 5 ports and the rest of them Gen 4, just so that we don't get any switching or figure out the PCA lane switching some other way. Because I want to know that when I'm plugging some stuff into my motherboard, I'm not going to lose anything. And I'm sure you want to know the same thing, at least at $500 when you've given that to Gigabyte. If you're interested in building the best bang for buck creator PC for you, then check out the links in the video description below. There's a PC build for every budget. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.